So in this first example, we're given a circuit with a 100 volt voltage source connected in series to a 10 kilo ohm resistor. And then there's this switching element here. And at t equals zero, the switch goes from connecting to this 0 0.5 microfarad capacitor over to this right hand side of the circuit. And what we're asked to do is find t naught as a function of t, which is the voltage drop across this 240 kilo ohm resistor in parallel with this 60 kilo ohm resistor. And we're gonna solve this using the Laplace transform method. So actually the first thing that I wanna do is go ahead and draw out our post switching circuit, right? The circuit after T equals zero. And we start by just having that capacitor, which is at 0 0.5 microfarads. And it's connected in series to this 32 kilo ohm resistor. And that's connected in series to, I'm gonna go ahead and combine those resistors in parallel, since we only care about the voltage drop across them, 240 kilo ohms in parallel with 60 kilo ohms. You can go ahead and check my math later, but I found it to be 48 kilo ohms. And just like before, we're looking for V naught, which is the voltage drop across now that 48 kilo ohm resistor. So now let's go through our steps of the Laplace transform method. Step one, was find any initial voltages and currents. on our inductors or capacitors. But here we have a capacitor, and that capacitor was initially attached to this 100 volt DC source. Remember, at DC, a capacitor is an open circuit, so effectively there was just an open circuit at the end, at the terminals of this source. So our initial voltage on this capacitor was 100 volts. So we'll say V naught comma C was equal to 100 volts. So that'll come back when we do the Laplace transform of that capacitor. There's nothing else. There's no other capacitors or inductors. So everything else is the same. Step two, um, convert or transform any sources. Now in the original circuit, there was this source that 100 volt source, but we're only concerned with the post switching circuit after T equals zero. And in that circuit, there are no sources. So this step is easy. We can just say that there are none. Step three wants us to then convert or transform any symbolic voltages or currents. Now in a previous lesson, I think I sort of misunderstood what the textbook was asking for when it said transform any symbolic voltages or currents. Because in this example, we actually do want to transform this V naught. It's sort of a kind of a silly step, um, but you know, we like to be sort of thorough, right? So all we're gonna do is say that our V naught which is a function of T is going to transform to, we're just going to call it capital V as a function of S, right? And we sort of do an accounting of any other things that we were asking to, or being asked to solve for in this circuit. So for us, it's just V naught, which we're going to call V S. Now, step four, the exciting part is transform the circuit elements. Now, if we go back and look at our circuit that we're transforming, remember resistors are easy. So, you know, for, you know, ZR just becomes ZR, right? Ohms stay the same. But CC is gonna become one over SC. But specifically, remember that the capacitor is also going to tack on that voltage source. 
that 100 ohm, or excuse me, 100 volt over S, 100 volt over, eh, 100 volts uh, initial voltage. So our V for C, remember, is equal to the current over SC. So there's our 1 over SC impedance plus um, the V naught over S. So we're actually going to add that voltage source into the circuit. So we're going to get a guy that looks like this. We have the capacitor. And we'll talk about the values here in just a second because we need to do some math first. Connected to this voltage source. Now this one is 100 volts over S. And the resistors are resistors. They don't care about transforms or anything. So that one is still just 32 kilo ohms connected in series with our 48 kilo ohm resistance. And we're still hunting for, now it's capital V of S over that. Now the last thing we need to figure out is that capacitance or the new impedance of our capacitor. Remember that ZC is equal to 1 over SC. So that's going to be equal to 1 over S times, what do we have? 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 6. We're going to go and pull that out of the denominator and get that it's 2 times 10 to the 6 over S. 2 times 10 to the 6 over S. And it's impedance, so it's given in ohms. Also, our source there should be listed as in volts. Step five. Do the analysis. Analysis. Now, we're interested in calculating this voltage. Um, so for a circuit like this, we're just going to use a very simple voltage divider. So we'll see that our voltage Vs is equal to the source voltage, 100 volts over S, times the voltage we care about. I'm just going to write it as 48 kilo ohms. But when you do the algebra, remember it's 48,000, plus the sum of all of the impedances. So 2 times 10 to the 6 over S plus 32K plus 48K. And I'll leave it up to you to do the algebra to resolve this. But when you do, you're going to get that Vs is equal to quite simply just 60 over S plus 25 volts. So there is our voltage in the S domain. Now I'm going to skip a step because the textbook did it kind of weird. So I'm actually going to jump straight from step five to step seven, which is now do the inverse. Transform to get our V of T. So let's see the inverse Laplace transform of 60 over S plus 25. It's already in that nice, neat partial fraction expansion. So that's going to be equal to just 60 times e to the minus 25 t times that unit function u of t in volts. So there we go. There's our answer, v naught of t is equal to 60 times e to the minus 25 t times u of t in volts. Now we could just stop right there. There's our final answer. but we're going to go ahead and be judicious, and now we're going to throw back into step six, which is to do a quick check using the initial and final value theorems. And final value theorems. This just makes sure that we didn't make any mistakes along the way because um, when we're all done, these things should hold true. The first one is that the limit as S approaches infinity of S times Vs should equal 
the limit as t approaches 0 of our v0 of t. So we'll go ahead and check on those. So we've got the limit as s approaches infinity of s times r v of s. So we're going to have 60s over s plus 25 is equal to the limit as t approaches 0 of 60e to the minus 25t times ut. Uh, we're going to start off, if we hit it once, we'll get actually just infinity over infinity is equal to 60 times e to the minus 25 times 0 times u to the 0. We'll resolve the right-hand side here in just a second. Um, but if you remember, oh goodness, what is it? Cal 1, L'Hopital's rule, right? It says you can take the derivative. And so that would be the limit as s approaches infinity of 60 over 1 is equal to 60 times e to the 0, e to the 0 is equal to 1 times 1. That's just going to leave us with, on the left-hand side, 60. Anything raised to the 0th power is 1, so 60 times 1 times 1 is just equal to 60. So that side of the theorem holds, and we're good to go. Let's take a look at the other side, which says that now the limit as s approaches 0 of s v of s is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of v naught of t. So let's write it out. The limit as s approaches 0 of 60s over s plus 25 is equal to the limit as t approaches infinity of 60e to the minus 25t times u of t. Um, on the left-hand side, we're going to get 0 times 0. So that's just 0 over 0. That's going to be 0 on the right-hand side. Um, and then we're going to have 60e to the minus 25 times infinity u to the infinity. So we'll have 0 is equal to 60 over, or minus 25 puts the exponent there in the denominator, so it's going to be 60 over infinity times 1. And anything over infinity is equal to 0, so we get a final result. 0 is equal to 0. So it checks out. So this is just a quick check, well, sort of quick check, to make sure that we didn't make any mistakes along the way, and that we got an answer that squares with our final value there. So. That is it for this example. I'm just going to move on in this sort of section of the course. I'm just going to work out a bunch of these examples. Um, so as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you guys in the next example.